so hard to talk about. Mm. Me. So there, there was a lot of actually changed the world. Uh, but I, there are a lot of things. Ah. <laughs> That's what happens when I try and like have a sit down talk with you guys. I'm like, oh God, I really am an idiot. It's time that we have a serious conversation. But before we get into that, thank you YouTube for sponsoring this video. So a lot of people don't know this and I've been really insecure to talk about it, but I actually grew up very, very poor. Long story short, financially, we just did not have the means to an end. <laughs> the ends to mean. I don't, I don't know that phrase. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> From the time I was like 11 years old, Onwards, me and my brother and my mom were going to food banks to get our food and dinners. Every Christmas and birthday, Salvation Army would always step in and um, it was really intense. <laughs> it was just very interesting because I always thought that my family had this generational curse. So to me, this financial freedom, I just knew that the, the path was gonna be hard if I ever wanted money. Like I literally did an interest test from when I was a kid. And everything is below average interest. And then it was like huge spike, 98 percentile, like for arts and womp womp, because that's obviously not really where you make money. And at least that's what I was raised to believe. It's not like I can do anything. I'm not like dying to be a doctor. I'm not trying to like be working at NASA or, or whatever it is. Like, I And then I just I kept getting fired everywhere that I work because I just don't care. In the midst of this financial struggle that we had in my family at this time, it was also hard because I saw a lot of ableism happening and not that much inclusivity. There was a lot of bullying with my family since my family are all little people except me, obviously. But through all this time, I was just having this driving feeling of always wanting to shed light on my family, mostly for them, but also partially for me to just kind of understand who I am. I would go to the store with my family and it was weird because people would view me as not somebody in that family because visually it just didn't make sense. A clerk would be like, hey, I love you guys, who's this? And then, oh, that's our son too. You met him last month. And it's like, this was always kind of the case. In high school and middle school, I would also see my brother be made fun of. And my brother would have a lot of medical things happening to him. With dwarfism, there are a lot of medical problems associated with it. So also growing up, seeing television shows where it was mostly reality shows, like most people who have dwarfism and there's a light shed on that are really only in the reality TV space. And that to me is terrible. They're all the same. You have the dwarf going on a blind date with the average height guy. There's that discrepancy of height and talking about it. It's like all that set up. We were always disappointed because we're like, when is there ever going to be an actual movement for, for little people? Not in a way that's just to get the views, you know? And I always thought that there was a way to do that, to get the views and to shed a light on it. And I always had these ideas too growing up with that. I actually had a notebook when I was like 16 and I wrote down all these different things, like they should do this, they should do that. And little did I know now, like I've been using that notebook from when I was 16 to help drive a lot of the content that I do now. So it's funny how like life just kind of works out like that. But anyways, it really fueled me to want to find a way to bring inclusivity to the forefront of everything I'm doing. And of course I would make videos about it back in like, I don't know, like 2014, 2015, 2016. No one cared, nobody watched, which is fine. And the videos honestly were just the worst. That is funny because here I am now, um, 20 million subscribers later, which is actually insane because it's been like two years. Um, so I don't know why everyone is subscribing to me, but thank you. I'm glad you're part of the family. And so it's been really great for me to use that in a way where it's helping a lot of people like understand a lot more about dwarfism and uh, Please hold. Ambulance! That's an E flat major, by the way. I'm psycho. Think I'm psycho. Moving on, I realized that a lot of the identity crisis and financial crisis that I was trying to figure out growing up actually helped me create a business because of YouTube. Thank God for YouTube. So to me, this is really a blessing, obviously, because I've never had money. And now I'm able to reinvest my money that I'm making from 
trying to make inclusivity more mainstream. I'm trying to shift it into different businesses and different projects. My sister just got done, for example, with a four-year lawsuit where her wheelchair was taken from her. So we want to make a documentary. And with the money coming in, I can now finance something like this myself instead of you know, trying to go like a traditional route. So I'm just really happy that YouTube exists and I'm happy I stuck with it. There are just so many different projects that I can't wait to release and put out and make because of YouTube and because of the financial freedom that I now have in my business to be able to, to diversify. And I honestly never imagined this. I mean, if your heart is screaming at you, that to do this in your life and you know this is something that you're passionate about and you have the fire under your butt like this is what I believe you're meant to do um, I just never thought it would be like this and be this successful um, <laughs> and I hope that it inspires a lot of you watching to keep going to really go for your dreams follow your heart this world needs more positive light. It needs more people speaking up about different situations and struggles. I mean, no one's perfect, right? Like everyone needs to feel related to in some way. And I feel like YouTube has done a really good job of that. And it's just only growing. And I think we can just kind of <laughs> sky's the limit, you know, if you're watching this, you at least just take away that YouTube really is a great tool. And it's something that if you work hard and you have thick skin and you're passionate about it and you stick with it, you can do it. So don't give up, don't settle. Keep on thinking about that end game of what you wanna change and just keep seeing it and it'll just drive you through your entire workforce of every day. Just lead with your creativity and um, you'll find yourself in a community like I feel like I'm now in a community with all of you. So I don't feel alone anymore. People are always telling me my content has changed their perspective on little people or just on feeling different. And that is a way that my passion has paid off as well, because I couldn't even imagine that so many people would feel inspired and moved to change their way of thinking. And that's something that anybody can do with their own perspective. Have a beautiful rest of the day. And I hope that you're feeling a little bit inspired. Let's let's be a team. Let's go, you know. Bye, have a great time.